Hey everyone, so today I am going to be doing a spoiler free review of The Witch Elm by Tana French. I don't know if I sound funny like on camera, but I'm pretty sick, so we'll just work with it. Um, but Tana French, you probably know her from writing the Dublin Murder Squad series. It is a mystery series. They're, it, although it is a series, they are kind of standalone books. Um, so they're from the perspective of the detectives solving the crimes. Um, but The Witch Elm is her first standalone novel. And I was a little worried about that because I liked the Dublin Murder Squad series so much. Um, she, basically what she does in that series is her first book in the woods. We are um, following like two detectives. Um, one's kind of more the main character than the other. And we follow them as they're trying to solve this mystery that they come across. And um, what she then does for the second book is she takes one of the main kind of side characters and puts them into the next book as the main character. So that's really cool. I really enjoy that. Um, but like I said, this is her first standalone. So I was worried, but um, I really enjoy her writing like her style her descriptions that's like my biggest draw for me so i've seen a lot of people say that this is a very slow moving mystery and that it didn't need to be as long as it is and i could see where you, where they feel that way but when it comes to ton of french like i like that long drawn out mystery normally that's not me i need like some excitement i need it to be fast paced but these are very character driven novels even though this is separate from her Dublin Murder Squad series it's still a very character driven mystery. In this we're following Toby who he's in his upper 20s and basically he's super lucky and he even mentions like how lucky he is um, but he has a good job he has an awesome girlfriend he's got friends that he parties with and like everything is going great for him like no complaints at all and then one day he is at home like in the middle of the night um, and he is awoken by people two guys who have broken into his house and they're like rummaging through his place and um, he tries to obviously defend himself but they end up beating him up pretty badly he is close to death and after this attack, he has um, memory issues, walking issues, speaking issues. Um, you can even see it in the way he talks. Like he can't think of the word that he needs um, to describe something or, you know, whole substitute words to just be able to have a basic conversation with people. And so when he's trying to heal from this, his uncle actually finds out that he has a brain tumor and doesn't have that much longer to live. So Toby's kind of the one who gets volunteered to go and stay with this uncle. His uncle doesn't have any family, like he doesn't have a wife or children. So it is Toby and his cousins and Toby's other uncles and aunts who help this dying uncle out. Um, so they he goes to stay with his uncle at the ivy house and it's like their ancestral house so toby and his cousins like grew up there going like grew up going there uh during the summers and it was there's just like a lot of childhood memories there for him and him and his girlfriend go so he's trying to heal with his mental and physical wounds and then also he's trying to help his uncle out who instead of going into hospice decides to stay home and he slowly starts deteriorating physically and mentally as well. Um, like I said this is a slow moving mystery so the big mystery in this novel um, other than who broke into Toby's house and beat the crap out of him is um, over 100 pages into the book. I mean it is a significant amount of pages into the book. Um, one of Toby's nephews finds a skeleton in the witch elm uh, in the tree it's a tree in their back garden and so at first they kind of think like you know this house is so old the skeleton could be hundreds of years old but it comes to find out that it is somebody that Toby and his cousins knew somebody their age who was thought to have committed suicide 10 plus years ago so with Toby's injury we start to see how he is an unreliable narrator um, because he doesn't remember a lot about um, recent events but then also past events. He 
starts to question who he is as a person. Um, he starts to question the people around him. He stops trusting his cousins who he grew up with. Uh, and he, he doesn't know um, who killed this guy they found in the tree. Was it him? And he can't remember because of this attack. Or was it somebody close to him? Was Did this guy kill himself in the tree somehow? So it is like this big mystery surrounding this. Um, that's all I can really say without spoiling anything. That's basically everything that's in the jacket. Uh, it is a really great novel. It is a standalone, so you could read this without reading any of her other books. But I highly suggest reading all of her books. They're great. I love her writing. If you're more into a slower paced or character driven mystery, I would recommend any of her books. I ended up giving this one a 5 out of 5. Um, and I don't want to say like I'm biased. Like I guess there are some things that could have been fixed in this book. Like yes, it didn't need to be this long. Um, it could have been faster paced, but that's not her style. And I feel like uh, if you're a fan of her Dublin Murder Squad series, then you'll really enjoy this book. So let me know if you've read this book or plan on picking it up or if you've read any other Tana French's books. Um, just let me know. She's one of my favorites and I think um, I read her first book when it came out in paperback and then ever since then I've been like pre-ordering all her books and reading them as soon as I get them. I just I just love her writing and I know if you've seen my channel before you know how I feel about that because I'm sure I've mentioned it before. I'm sure I've talked about the Dublin Murder Squad series before. Um, I again highly recommend it and it is just they're atmospheric books, character driven books. It's like I feel like her releasing her books in the fall or the publisher releasing them in the fall it's like a good time to read them like a fall winter book they're set in Ireland it's cold and raining a lot in them and it's just it's they're wonderful let me know down below if you've read any of her books or if you've read this one let me know what you thought of it and I will see you in my next video